Well, something important here at the definition of the two-sided uh, improper integrals is that this integral is well defined. Yeah, and what does it mean? Well, in the definition we included the existence of an a such that the integral from minus infinity to a and the integral from a to infinity exists. So if this integral were to depend on a, then it would be a kind of strange defini definition. So it would not be well defined. So suppose we have, instead of a, we would choose a different number, a star. And suppose that in this definition, minus uh, the integral from minus infinity to a star exists. So basically it says that the the area 1 has a specific size and the area 2 has a specific size and also area 3 has a specific size. But suppose that the integral from minus infinity a star fx dx exists and the integral from a star to infinity fx, fx dx exists. So then we could take a star in the definition of the integral from minus infinity to infinity. Now, look at this integral. So we're going to split up the integral from a star to infinity. Yeah, since the integral from a star to infinity is basically the areas 2 and 3 together. And area 2 is just the definite integral from a star to a, fx dx. And uh, area 3 is given by the integral from a to infinity fx dx. Now we just assume that all these integrals exist, so also the integral a to infinity and the integral from minus infinity to a. So what happens here? We just kind of regrouped our areas 1, 2 and 3. So. We, we indicate the, the a star to infinity is area 2 plus 3, and minus infinity to a star is the area 1. And now we decoupled, so to say, the areas 2 and 3. But now we have a sum of three integrals, and we can recombine 1 and 2. So let's do this. So let's group 1 and 2. So we get the integral of minus infinity a star fx dx, plus the integral a star a fx dx, so this will be a new group, plus the integral from a to infinity of x dx. So basically, here is uh, area 3, and we combine areas 1 and 2. But of course, the areas 1 and 2 can be written much, sh much shorter as the integral from minus infinity to a of x dx. And uh, we keep the third part, the integral from a to infinity fx dx. So the conclusion here is when we take another a star as an alternative to a, then basically what happens is that by regrouping we can see that the integral of minus infinity a star plus the integral from a star to infinity over fx equals the one of a minus infinity a plus the integral over a to infinity of x dx. So we could have chosen a star just as well as a in order to define the integral from minus infinity to infinity. So this is very nice, otherwise the concept of the integral of minus infinity to infinity would have been ambiguous and therefore quite useless.